Soccer 605, and we're here with Dale Weiler, competitive coach for Dakota Alliance Soccer Club. Uh, caught up with you here for the men's national team game against Mexico. Any predictions for this game before we get into other things? I just saw the uh, the starting lineup, okay. and it's interesting to say the least. Uh, right. There's a couple uh, new players in there, Jordan Morris and wow. Alvarado, a center back. So it'll be interesting. It's kind of a yeah. mixture of veterans and young players, but yeah, it'll be fun to watch. Joseph Cerro had yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. It'll be All exciting, right. yeah. So what's happening with Dakota Alliance? Yeah, there's a lot going on. Geez, I, it, it's weird that it's uh, the middle of April already. I feel like yeah, every every year at this time, things just kind of zoom by because the transition of outdoor so or indoor soccer to outdoor soccer just kind of, you wait for it to come and then more time goes on and then finally, boom, it's here. Yeah. And we've had, uh, over the last probably three weeks, um, we've really had a lot of teams go to different events kind of all over the place. Great. Um, last weekend, I think we had more teams across the Midwest than maybe we ever had, which is a little bit different. Usually we tend to, you know, take a collection of teams to the same type of event. Uh -huh. um, and just just happenstance at this last weekend, a lot of teams were uh, elsewhere, meaning we were in Rockford at the Puma uh, okay. Cup uh, Showcase. Uh, we had showcase. three teams there. We had our 17 boys down in St. Louis at the Scott Gallagher Showcase. Okay. Um, we had teams participating in the Champions League, in the NSL, uh, in the West Des Moines Premier Games, wow. and the KC Cha I mean, it was like we were all over, um, so which was cool. Let's go back to the Puma Showcase. Who yeah. went to that tournament? Yeah, we had the 15 boys, okay. the 15 girls, and the 16 girls go there. Okay. Um, I, uh, I know the girls fared very well. Um, you know, at a showcase event, it's just three games, kind of get in, get out. Um, hopefully That's get great. an opportunity to, you know, get noticed by some coaches and whatnot. And I know they, they performed very well and won all three of their games. So That's it was, outstanding. Yeah. They, they attract some top-level girls teams there. Yeah, they do. I, I know they played um, Eclipse out of Illinois, a team from Wisconsin, and then one from Minnesota. So I think the competition yeah. was spot on for them. Yeah. Outstanding. Yeah. Okay, then um, Scott Gallagher, who went there? Our 17 boys. 17 boys. Um, and who coaches those? Daniel coaches our 17 okay. boys. They had done the event last year. Um, <laughs> With a different coach and just had a really good experience and you know there's there's a couple of events and areas of the Midwest that we're trying to get to a little bit more frequently now good. just instead of always going to Kansas City or always you know doing kind of the the norm so I think venturing out into those areas getting feedback from the coaches who go it'll, it'll help us kind of broaden our spectrum as to where we can go so. well it's good to run into different competition yeah absolutely so. absolutely now uh, Champions League let's talk yeah. a little bit about Champions League because that just kicked off so, yeah, yeah, you know, the Champions League, uh, you know, which is, is run under the state association, um, which I help run um, under the state, is I think this year it's, it's different in the sense that we've been able to um, broaden again kind of the spectrum of participating teams in the state. Where over the first weekend, last weekend, we were able to have games in different <coughs> locations going on at the same time. So there was about 25 games occurring in Pier and then 30 or 40 occurring here in, in Sioux Falls. All last so, week? Yeah, so wow. it allowed for like Black Hills Rapids and Hub City to play in Pier because mm -hmm. it was just more conducive for them to travel sure. there. And then for teams like, or organizations like Brookings and I know Northwest Iowa came last weekend to Sioux Falls because it, we're trying to make it as convenient as possible for travel purposes to make it, you know, kind of like a one day deal where you can come in, play two games, get out, and really the focus again is, is purely on uh, just appropriate and meaningful competition. That's really all we're trying to accomplish is can we get teams uh, to play against other teams that it makes sense for the development of the players. So if that means a uh, you know, a 13-year-old team playing a 14 or 15-year-old team, then we'll do it. Or if it means a girls team possibly playing a boys team because it makes sense, then we'll do it. So I think it's, it's uh, we're trying to be open-minded about that. And so far, with the first kind of date, if you will, down, I think it was a good success for so sure. So each of the teams is evaluated basically on their c c competition level? Yeah. And matched up that way? Exactly, yeah. So it's Sort of like the MRL is intended. Yeah, it's like, you know, in the registration process, like teams have the ability to enter 
you know, some information about, hey, we've only done one tournament, you know, and then I'll know, well, maybe they, they definitely need to be matched up versus uh, this uh, age team or level of team that is similar to it. Or it could be a competitive team that says, hey, you know, we do tournaments all the time, and but we have these couple of days where we'd like some more local competition, and then, you know, Brookings Watertown maybe has a similar team, and then it, it just works out. So it was that feeling out process to make that happen, and it'll be a feeling out process probably the whole spring two to really kind of nail nail it down but so far so good yeah and you'll just keep yeah. tightening it up as yeah. each year yeah now yeah. what are the competition levels do you have rec and competitive involved yeah. in that champions league i think the uh, the the original and i think the future vision of the south dakota champions league is to encompass everything so okay. if it can encompass recreational organizations from you name it across the state um then the, the idea would be for let's say there's a, a rec team in, in sioux falls that maybe is willing to travel a little bit and they can match up versus a rec team from Brookings. I mean, absolutely, then the Champions League would be the avenue to kind of have that. Um, I think that might be a couple years down the road because I think there needs to be just buy-in to the whole thing and that's probably going to take a few years for that to happen. So for sure at this point it's much more so of a competitive um, league, but I think long term kind of the sky's the limit for yeah. what it can do, you know. So you could have teams in there that are potential Coles American Cup teams. Yeah. Or future President's Cup teams. Exactly. Or State Cup teams. Exactly, yep. And as long as they match up and it makes sense, you know, for a good game, then yeah. you're golden. Yeah. So what about the, you said Iowa Premier League? You, NSL. NSL. Nebraska Soccer League. Nebraska Soccer League. Yeah, so, so some of our teams, um, so like our 13-year-old girls and our 14-year-old girls are doing the Nebraska Soccer League. And one of the reasons they chose to go down that path is the Champions League probably isn't the best avenue for them based on the other teams that they could maybe face face in it. So it's like, well, the NSL is kind of perfect for them. So they go down there, you know, I think they do three Saturdays in the month of, okay. of April, something like that. And they'll match it, you know, they'll have games against like Elkhorn and OFC, um, Papillion's in it, Gretna, you know, teams okay. like that. So that's kind of their way in which they're well, getting great. that. Yeah. So that's some good collaboration going on, not only within South Dakota with all the organizations, clubs and associations, but also across the border. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in the end, uh, we live in an area, you know, the mid, you know, the west side of the Midwest, where uh, you can get stuck just facing the same clubs all the time in your little communities. So if we're open-minded to going and doing an NSL, and and they are maybe open-minded to coming and doing just friendlies, for example, which we try to set those up too, then it's a trade-off with yeah. building a relationship with other cities That's great. and whatnot. Yeah, so. all for the good of the kids. Absolutely, good of the game, the kids. Yeah, so. yeah. Dale, what? Now I know you also have the summer in June coming up. Yep. Uh, your your big outdoor tournament. Yep. Um, how are plans coming for that? Yeah, I mean, you know, this time of the year, it's really just a matter of reaching out to organizations, t telling them about our event and why it's special and what we have to offer. Um, and I think. You know, getting the regional bid here in, in Sioux Falls has really helped and say, hey, you know, like we, yeah. we've got some big things going on in the next yeah. few years. Come check it out, if you will. Yeah. Um, I think based on what Danielle, we were just talking about it the other day, there's some new clubs again from Minnesota that are coming into the fold. Outstanding. I think Eden Prairie Soccer Club is, is uh, sending teams down, which is a little bit different. Um, so we're trying to tap into places like that to, you know, just get different, you know, diversity in terms of teams in as much as possible. So right now it's just a matter of getting teams yep. in and things are good. Now, what are the dates? Do you know off the top of your Yeah, head? June 13th, 14th, and 15th. Okay, and yep. what, when is the registration's open now, right? It is open now. I don't know off the top of my head when the deadline is, okay. but uh, Well, soon. But, but they'll fill up, so. Yeah, absolutely, it'll fill up. And I know, uh, I know this year we're trying to um, do some things and with Soccer 605 too and with Midco Sport, I should talk about this after, but um, about getting some of the games recorded yep. and whatnot. And I know you guys are, are out there doing stuff like that too, yep. so that's going to be another good perk this yeah. year to, to have that on. So We're looking forward to, to live streaming our first game. Awesome, so awesome. We're looking doing forward the research to it. on it. Yeah. Uh, we, hockey, hockey got the benefit yeah, of our experimentation through the winter, yeah. and now we know what we're doing. So. Yeah, well, good. And good. we feel a lot more comfortable calling soccer. To awesome, us, so. awesome. Yeah, I'm sure you do. <laughs> All right. Well, Dale, uh, yeah. a lot of stuff happening in Dakota Lions. Yeah, appreciate things you taking are good. time with us at, at Soccer 605. I appreciate it. Thanks, thanks Carol. Keep us posted. All right. All right. Thanks.